What's going on, everybody? It's Monday. Time for Swift News. Where the hell have I been? Uh, I put out this tweet, but I know not everybody follows on Twitter or sees it because I've gotten a lot of questions. I'll, I'll make this short. I've been working on a consulting project I took on. Pretty big project. It's a grocery ordering app. Um, not only is there like the consumer facing or how to order groceries, but there's a whole like back end system where, you know, uh, people can fulfill the orders like in the warehouse. So it's like a whole system and the app was built in swift ui and server side swift so there was a lot of learning going on right so that's why i had to just put the videos aside and focus on that so that's where i've been the past few weeks we're in the final testing phases now getting ready to launch in about a week or two so now i can get back to videos but on that note i'm only doing the mvp in the initial launch so we are going to look to hire an ios developer to take over the project uh, again it is in swift ui server side swift you'll be working closely with uh, tim condon uh, vapor lead at ray wonderlick also spoken at a, a bunch of conferences all about vapor so the the person to know with server side swift and vapor but you'll be working closely with him he's taking care of the back end uh, we're looking for an ios developer to take over uh, you know the client side and again it is Mostly in Swift UI. Of course, Swift UI is brand new, so I had to go down to UI Kit for a few things. But um, one last note: this it's not a junior developer role. Unfortunately, you will be the only iOS developer on the project. You won't have anybody above you like telling you what to do. So it's not really for like your your first job or a junior developer. So if you have some experience, you're looking for a new project. Again, working with Swift UI server side Swift. Email me, let me know, we can talk. Um, I'm gonna put out a tweet about this later, but this is kind of the first time I'm, I'm mentioning it here. All right, with that out of the way, let's throw up the rundown and get into the news. We're gonna start off with some App Store updates because, you know, putting apps on the App Store, that's what this is all about, right? So this is gonna affect us all. So uh, app review process updates. This one's from August 31st. Uh, again, I've been out of the game a little bit the past few weeks, so some of these might be a little old. But anyway, for apps that are already on the App Store, bug fixes will no longer be delayed over guideline violations, um, except for those related to legal issues. What this means is if you're kind of disputing with Apple a guideline violation for your app, but there's like a bug fix that's affecting your users, you're gonna be allowed to fix that bug and continue this guideline debate kind of like on the side. So the bug fix uh, will go through. In addition to that, uh, so you can appeal the decision, but you can also suggest changes to the guidelines. And if you click on this, you'll go to a forum on how to like submit a suggestion for the, for the guidelines. So it seems like Apple's being a little more open with their App Store rules. Obviously that's been in the news a lot lately. Uh, we won't touch that, but uh, another update, which I'm excited for is get ready for subscription offer codes. And you'll see this was announced September 2nd, um, but later this year, so not quite yet, uh, you'll be able to acquire, retain, and win back subscribers with offer codes for subscription. So basically you can offer you know, free or discounted prices for auto renewable subscriptions. And, and it does appear it's coming with iOS 14 because customers are gonna have to be on iOS 14 or iPad OS 14, but hey, Again, subscriptions appear to be the future. More on that later. We're talking, I shouldn't say the future, like they're here now, but it's what Apple's like obviously pushing. Um, and we got a whole another article about that later in the show. But, you know, if, if, if subscriptions are going to be the thing, like give us as much flexibility as possible. And this is one step towards that, allowing us to, you know, give free or discounted prices on that. And then the last bit about the App Store uh, updates is, you know, multiple app review guidelines addressing game streaming services, in-app purchases, advertising, and more. So, of course, uh, this App Store stuff's been in the news with the Epic stuff, the Microsoft X Cloud stuff. So they have this new game streaming um, stuff. To be honest with you, I don't really pay attention to this. Go ahead and read it. I mean, I'm not building a game streaming service, so it doesn't really uh, affect me. But uh, if you're interested in that, check out the article, read that. I did want to point out something that's interesting. Person-to-person um, -person experiences. Uh, so this is like tutoring, fitness classes. Uh, the use of in-app purchases are not necessary for these type of experiences. So that's that's nice. That helps, right? Especially because if you're trying to make a revenue stream off giving a fitness class and you got to give 30% of your fitness class revenue to Apple, like that's almost an impossible business. Um, and then app clips, widgets, all new in iOS 14, uh, basically <laughs> cannot include advertising. Uh, you would think that'd be common sense and that was just kind of like, oh, yeah, duh, but you know, I'm sure people are out there doing that. So uh, that wraps up kind of the app store updates, but uh, we have a new kind of app store here by Jordan Singer. Again, I love his blog. Uh, I, I, I build my ideas because not a lot of us do that. But uh, anyway, this is the story about how he built Airport, which is the test flight app store. So if you're interested in the backstory, I'm going to talk more about like the product and what it is. But if you're interested about the, the backstory, again, this says, you know, uh, from idea to, to app, 
You can hear how he decided to come up with the name, why it exists, uh, all that good stuff. But if you're interested in the backstory, there you go. Here is uh, the actual product. So it's the Test Flight App Store. And this is specifically built for the developer community. And if you're interested in it, you can sign up for the, the Test Flight Beta of that. Um, test Flight Beta of a Test Flight App Store. Meta. But anyway, the, the whole point is to have a, a one-stop shop to go for all the indie developers that are putting their apps uh, up for beta testing. So you can kind of shop, if you will, you're not paying obviously, um, for apps to beta test. So if you're in the indie developer community, you want to see what some of these other people on Twitter are making and actually try out their apps and give them feedback, uh, this is a great uh, place for that. And as you can see, you can search by category. That's nice organized. And as a developer, uh, you can kind of have your own little page that has your apps uh, and your profile about you. So I think this is gonna be a great tool for the community and that's why Jordan wanted to do it. He says he wanted to give back to the community. So if you have an app uh, that you wanna get a lot of beta testers on or at least get it in front of, um, you can submit your app here uh, for approval onto the test flight app. So a pretty cool product for the developer community. And one of those apps that's on there is Aviary by Shihab here. Uh, so I'm sharing this long Twitter thread. This has been going on for a while. So you can see he said new Twitter app, new Twitter app. This kind of goes in conjunction. Twitter just released an update to their uh, developer API. But uh, you can see he's messing around with like the iPad, the sidebars. This was, as you can see, July 3rd. So shortly after WWDC, uh, he started playing around with this. But what I love uh, about what he did is he just kind of shared the whole process. And I've been kind of following it on Twitter like ever since he started. So I'm going to scroll through kind of quickly, maybe pick one randomly but you know screenshotting talking about what he's building sharing it openly on twitter and and i love like when developers do that They're like this is so uh like interesting to me um and i definitely want to do that when i start building uh, my app i know i've been talking about my app forever um but <laughs> we'll get there <laughs> other things keep coming up but yeah like, like setting uh an app tint using the new color picker in ios 14 so you can see the screenshots of, of how he's using you know the color picker in this twitter app so again he's just kind of sharing the progress as he's building the app. And it has been uh, super interesting to watch. Moving on to that uh, article I said we were gonna get to about subscriptions later. Uh, this is a very large article, however, if you are building an app and you're either you're doing subscriptions or you're considering the subscription path for how you wanna monetize, this is an absolute must read. It's super long. Uh, I'm not gonna like read it all. It would take forever. Um, I'm just gonna kind of give some highlights, but the, essentially what the article is, it's basically, like why do app developers think subscription is like the only option? And don't get me wrong, they don't just bash subscriptions. They, there's a whole section of this that says, here's where subscriptions work. Here's where they make sense. Um, and there's a whole another section, well, let me scroll down to the sections here, um, where, so yeah, yeah, why are subscriptions surging, even though everyone hates them? That's the other thing, like as a consumer, like take your developer hat off, right? As somebody who buys apps, uses apps, whatever, you don't like to see a subscription. You're like, another another subscription? So if consumers like hate them, why are they becoming like the de facto way to monetize? So that's what that um, part is all about. Uh, are there other models? Again, when do they work? When do subscriptions not work? Uh, what are our plans? What can you do, uh, et cetera? So, and again, here it is, warning. This is half a book. You don't need to read it top to bottom, you know, pick the chapters you like. But, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna showcase like two points but I would recommend reading the whole article. It's very, very good. Um, so this talks about why, you know, why they're surging, long story short, because Apple's kind of like really pushing it. Um, and, you know, they give other reasons. But I want to talk about um, when subscriptions do work and give a couple of their ideas on when that is. Um, so, and, and it all kind of boils down to one point of like, you're offering continued benefits, right? So you offer entertainment services like Netflix or Spotify. It's pretty self-explanatory. It's like an endless stream of entertainment or you own a monopoly like Microsoft and Adobe and you have no choice. Um, so again, you can read more um, about why uh, they would work, but I wanna to touch on real quick why they don't work, especially this one paragraph, because I think it really uh, hits home <laughs> with a lot of us. So here's, descriptions do not work when, and then here's the big one. And, and I think this, I think this is the, the biggest takeaway for you know, everyday developers like, like ourselves here. It says, customers don't understand the work behind the subscription. Uh, I don't really get this first line, but whatever. <laughs> if you don't live stream multimedia poetry walking up and down Japan, here's the, uh, and you pretty much, uh, or you pretty much offer the same thing every month, but you keep charging a subscription. Meaning like, it says, people will feel like you charge rent because you can, not because it costs you money to run your operation. Um, people have to understand and see and feel and experience why they need to pay you constantly. And I think this comes back to us as developers, 
just constantly updating your app, trying to constantly provide value if you're going the subscription route, um, right? If you're, if you're not going to constantly update your app and, and put in new stuff, maybe the uh, subscription route isn't for you. But you may be thinking like, well, make my customers understand. <laughs> this is what I say. Uh, this is impossible, right? People think making software is not a big deal. After all, a copy of your app costs you nothing. Uh, they expect support, but don't think about what it costs you. They expect it to work on the latest iPhone, but don't think that that costs you time and development, right? Um, this may be unfair, but not everyone is an expert on software development economics. So again, I really like that paragraph because I know we all feel that way and we just think people should understand. But I think the the way to power through that is make it painfully obvious through your app, through new features, new, new benefits that your app provides, that your subscription is worth it. So again, anyway, that, that's all we'll touch on on here. Super long article. If you're dealing with subscriptions at all, absolute must read. As always, link in the description. Oh, there's an Apple event tomorrow. I guess it's supposed to be a watch and an iPad Air, like, okay. <laughs> this is like the least excited I've ever been for an Apple event. Um, so that probably means that they're gonna drop major bombs. I mean, the, the leakers kind of ruin everything. Apologies if I ruined it for you, but um, uh, it's pretty much certain this is not the phone event. Uh, this is just kind of like a little mini event. Um, expect more Apple events in the later this year that have the phone and maybe the new Macs, but this one's probably not it. Again, me saying that and probably jinxing it, they're probably gonna drop everything. Um, I'll probably have it on in the background. I'm not even gonna like be excited to watch it. So again, that probably means they're gonna, it's gonna be world shattering, <laughs> but that is happening tomorrow. So uh, pay attention to that and hopefully something cool happens. Next, we have an article from Antoine Vanderlee about integrating Swift UI with UI kit apps for early adoption. So what's happening in the next couple of weeks, whether it's in tomorrow's event, like I just said, with iOS 14, or in later in October when the actual iPhone event happens, iOS 14 is coming, right? What that means is, you know, most companies uh, do N minus one for what iOS they support. Of course, the larger your user base, you probably have to go N minus two, N minus three. But most people, most developers like you and I uh, will support N minus one. That means iOS 13 is now the, the bottom uh, OS, which means Swift UI. Uh, so what Antoine's talking about here is how you can start uh, implementing Swift UI into your existing UI kit app. Um, because it's, I think, you know, I'm not going out on a limb here. A lot of people consider Swift UI to be like Apple's future. Right, like of course UI Kit's going to be around probably forever, <laughs> but you know where Apple's going is Swift UI. So what this article is all about is implementing Swift UI into your UI Kit app, maybe just like one screen at a time. Maybe you start building new features in Swift UI because um, eventually you may end up converting your entire app to Swift UI, but doing it all at once it's probably a bit much. So this talks about things to consider when adopting. Um, uh, again, using Swift UI for new features only. You don't want to go ahead and just rewrite everything. Um, but it talks about how to present a Swift UI view in a UI Kit view controller. Um, again, just slowly implementing Swift UI into your existing uh, UI Kit app. So if you're in that situation and you want to start dipping your toes in Swift UI, but you don't want to rewrite your entire app, uh, check out this article and maybe start implementing just a, a simple screen or two. Maybe maybe start with your settings screen or something. You know, just that's that's always like the go-to like experimental screen. Um, but anyway, yeah, check it out if you're in that situation. Next up, we have something I hope you can take away. 24 Swift extensions for cleaner code, right? There's probably one or two extensions in here you'll find useful. Of course, you're not gonna find them all useful, but it's really that, just very simple uh, extensions, like trimming white spaces and new lines uh, on a string. Here, simple little extension for that. And there's 24 of these, so definitely click the article, scroll through, find what you like, <laughs> leave what you don't like. But uh, I know like I have a, a certain amount of extensions that I take from, from project to project um, that I seem to just be reusing like all the time. And actually this is, this is one of them, this whole string to date and date to string, right? Cause when you're working with an API and you're getting like a date back on something, it's most likely gonna be in this format, right? I don't know what the name of it is. <laughs> I think it has a name, but uh, you have to convert this format to Swift's date object. And then oftentimes if you have to like post to the server, you have to convert your date object to this string to send up with your JSON. So yeah, this string to date and date to string, like I use in every project. Um, but anyway, there's 24 of them in this article. Uh, check it out. Uh, I'm sure you're gonna be able to find, you know, one or two that you're gonna find useful and in, in use in your projects. Moving on, we got an article by Guy Rambo about turning Chibi Studio Canvas into an app clip for iOS 14. 
Now, I'll be the first to say, uh, I know nothing about app clips. I haven't looked into them even a little bit, so I'm not gonna be able to provide any comments or insight into this, other than that I think it was cool what he did and what he's showing. So his app, Chibi Studio, has like a whole customization like studio uh, in his app. So this article is about how he got that into the 10 megabyte limit for the app clip. Because if you don't know, you can only put 10 megabytes worth of stuff into your app clip. And here's a, a video. Let me make my screen smaller so this isn't ridiculous. Um, here's a video of his app clip in action. So you hit the NFC, there's the, the sheet that pops up, hit play. And then you see in his app clip, he's got the whole you know customization studio. So again, I don't know anything about app clips. I haven't messed with it yet, but if you are building an app clip for your app uh, and you're running into some some of the limitations some you know some restrictions check out this article uh talks all about all the stuff he had to do to basically get it to work so again if you're building an app clip definitely check this out moving on to the acid trip that is ar corner adam varga here uh, again the text out in the open that's again it's gonna it's gonna be wild pretty cool looking um, but yeah, I just think it's going to be going to be crazy. Uh, same thing here from Rosie. Uh, the, imagine seeing like, a, again, this is when you have AR glasses on, right? If you're holding up your phone, whatever. But when you have AR glasses and you're just seeing all this stuff around, like a black hole that you can just like walk into, like that's, it's kind of freaking me out just like watching it get closer and closer on a computer screen. Imagine if this was like AR, like what's going to happen if I step in there? Uh, and then lastly, this actually just launched in um, Xco or iOS 14.7, like the latest beta, and that's real-time reflections. I'm going to zoom out a little bit um, so we can see this. Um, yeah, real-time reflections. So what you're looking at here, if you look on the bottom of these spheres, you can see the different colors of construction paper in the reflections of the AR objects. Like those aren't real objects, and you can see real-time reflections. Again, this was brand new in iOS 14.7. So uh, I thought that one was, was, uh, was pretty cool. And then finally, the LOL of the week. Place your bets. Who's going to win? This is the Mac Pro Downhill Derby. Who do you got? Do you got the rolling trash can or do you got the $700 rims uh, Mac Pro? Like That thing better win. $700 wheels. Those things better have so much grip. Like, that thing better win. But anyway, that wraps up this week's episode of Swift News. We are back with regular videos now that my project is over. So we'll be seeing you soon.